And I can't wait to see what our Twitter DMs are going to oh, look God, like. Oh, God, that's going to be a fucking... <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm excited about it or excited is even the right word. Anticipating, I don't know. It's like whatever uh, Dallas Sumo Club puts the uh, our practices on YouTube. I mean, everything's... I love pre- those. <laughs> I love the slow-mo. I do, too. But the uh, it's it's like, you know... There's a lot of like, you know, nice comments and then there's some fucking dude one time that like, I mean, he totally dirty deleted his comment, but was like, what are you guys even doing? It's not even a forceful touch. Yeah. Oh my God. Is that guy smiling? What Is he having fuck? fun? I thought Sumo was supposed to be the way of the warrior and spirituality. That not guy obviously working up a light sweat. has pee pee problems. To take the time on your day. <laughs> I don't. I, I, it's like I'm gonna stop what I'm doing, and I'm gonna put forth the effort to write to you to let you know how much. You know, I have a way of dealing with that, though. It's uh-huh. the same way that I, I deal with like the unsolicited dick pics and like oh, shady God. job texts and stuff. You- I have a whole folder full of cloacas. <laughs> And I will just send them each a duck butthole. Oh and that usually God. shuts them the fuck up. That's true. It's true. Oh, my God. You know, I hate everything that you do and what you're all about. Have a duck butthole. <laughs> even, the, <laughs> even the nice even the nice ones, you know, maybe yeah. we send them duck buttholes, too. Hey, you feel like rolling the dice? Send us a DM. Yeah, hit us up hole. on Twitter. You might get a duck butthole. <laughs> Hi, this is Matt. I'm an amateur sumo wrestler. And my name is Sabrina. I am madly in love with an amateur sumo wrestler. And, and this, this is, is Sumo, sumo Punks. punks. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Hey guys, welcome to our podcast. I'm sure you're wondering why a couple of filthy crust punks decided to make a podcast about sumo. Well, basically... It's just because we like punk and we like sumo and we wanted to talk about one of those things from the perspective of the other. We also thought this may be a good way for other like-minded people to get to know the art of sumo a little bit better themselves. Yeah. Um, One of the main reasons I wanted to do a DIY punk perspective on sumo is because amateur sumo is already punk as fuck. Uh, athletes travel all over the place to take part in tournaments using their own resources, like mm-hmm. a DIY punk band and a crappy van traveling all over the place on their own dime. They also tend to bring a lot of booze with them. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, just small groups of folks meeting with other like-minded individuals, making wild shit happen. So a thrash show in a smelly basement is definitely going to have a different crowd than a martial arts tournament but the fighting spirit in sumo is as strong as the creative and earnest passion of punk and i feel like both are an integral part of who i am and i want to get more folks excited about it and more more people interested in trying it out yeah what's really weird is that even though fewer young people are getting into sumo in japan where it originates there seems to be this huge surge in popularity in the rest of the world there are now amateur sumo clubs that are popping up all over the place, especially here in Texas. Yeah, there's a Shogeki Sumo in Houston, mm-hmm. Mighty Eagle Sumo in San Antonio, Dark Circle Sumo in Austin, and Dallas Sumo Club. Dallas Sumo Club! <laughs> Woo! And there are ass loads of events coming up, and we want to get yes. more people to come check stuff out, you know, safety permitting, of course. Yes, please wear your mask. Get vaccinated. Stop breathing on everyone. (laughs) And finally, one of the coolest aspects of the punk subculture and of sumo is that they both tend to break down societal assumptions. And and in the case of sumo, that's the assumption that a person has to have a low BMI to do feats of athleticism, strength, and agility. That's right. Fat people can do anything, goddammit. (laughs) 
All right, so I'm Matt. I live in the Dallas area. I was born in Pawnee, Oklahoma, and spent a good chunk of my life in Norman, Oklahoma. That wasn't clear. I am Pawnee, Choctaw, and Seminole. I'm an amateur sumo wrestler, and I do tech support to pay the bills. See, uh, I play bass, drums, guitar, and I've been in several really bad punk bands over the last 20 years so it's name dropping time okay i was in snot rockets humanicide killer next door uranium death crow silk shaft average life expectancy brotherhood of evil mutants uh i'm sure i'm forgetting but those are the ones that i remember right now and i I used to book uh punk shows all over norman and i got into that that lifestyle you know with just drinking way too much and getting boldly thrashed and wildly out of control to say I was like hedonistic would be like a severe understatement I was I was living my body like I was living my life like wagyu beef I just had so much beer and just it's been so excessive my meat was marbled don't they massage wagyu oh yeah don't they give those cows like deep tissue massages oh yeah (laughs) So I decided uh, I was going to quit drinking and start taking better care of myself. And to do that, you know, I needed a physical activity. But I have a hard time finding the motivation to, like, really commit to something. So I used to wrestle as a kid. And I have a deep fascination with martial arts. So I explored what kind of options are around Dallas. I scoped out some judo schools, but I'm six foot four and 420 pounds. 420 blaze it! <laughs> so I had an incredibly difficult time finding a gi that would fit. And this was like around 2018 or so. At the time, we were watching Hinomaru Sumo, and it made me remember watching the international sumo, sumo tournaments on ESPN back in the day at like four in the morning. We we're all chugging whiskey. So I, just, I kept watching it. And you know how like folks in shonen anime are? They're just like really excited and super inspiring about whatever the hell it is they're doing. And the drama of it all just reeled me in. I, I wanted to do sumo. I had that fire inside, and it wanted more sumo. So... We started watching the the Grand Sumo highlights on NHK and watching these big dudes doing these amazing feats of strength and agility just gave me inspiration. It made me feel like when I was a kid and all the hoodlums on Yellow Horse Drive would get all hyped up on Coca-Cola and karate movies and we'd all beat the hell out of each other. Sumo gave me that feeling again. I I, I had to wrestle or grapple. I, I had to do something, so... After a while, the pandemic happened and we got furloughed from work. (laughs) So I had some time to actually exercise. I started walking and marauding around the neighborhood, but I I just needed more. Then I saw someone in a sumo group on social media talk about forming a sumo club in Dallas. And I was all about that shit. I was so stoked. They started in January 2021, but I didn't go until May of 2021 after Sabrina was fully vaccinated. And after, after that first practice... I was beat the fuck up, but I felt fucking great. I felt amazing. It seriously felt like a post-coital glow. I, so I, I knew I found my sport, my activity, the fun way in which I was going to take back control of my body. And what was cool is I didn't feel self-conscious about my body like like I kind of did whenever I couldn't find a gi to fit, you know, for judo. I didn't have to be a Chad fucking McKimbo, you know, to do sumo. <laughs> in fact, my size is an advantage in sumo. It really satiates. <laughs> it really satiates my primal urge to wrestle. I studied uh, anthropology in college, and it got me thinking about how some form of wrestling and grappling exists all across all cultures of humanity. Wrestling is like a very human thing. People just like smooshing their meat up against each yeah. other. <laughs> and you know, every culture has its own unique approach to that meat smooshing. And I, I just, I, I really, it just fascinates the shit out of me. I like watching like, Senegalese lamb wrestling and shoot em, Mongolian wrestling, judo, freestyle, even pro wrestling. And, you know, I've watched some MMA, like Stamp Fairtex and Rug Rug. Hell yeah. I guess Rug Rug is Omar Kane, you know, in the MMA world now, but still Rug Rug. Yeah, sumo's my my favorite though. And you know, aside from trying to take better care of myself and you know, getting getting to shape and all that, my other motivation is to develop buns. <laughs> I have this killer fry bread booty, like serious Hank Hill action. And I I got to work my way up to some Takara Fuji style musculature. So sumo buns. Sumo butts drive me nuts. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sabrina, 
And I think sports are fucking dumb. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, not really. Um, I, I'm, I kind of started to come around on it recently. I was definitely one of those kids in high school who was like, oh, I'm so much better than like the jocks and stuff because I dyed my hair blue and fucking fucking edgelord. Don't throw balls at people. I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's always been like something that I just wasn't interested in, I guess. Yeah. I never understood sports culture. When I, I have to admit, when I was in high school, I was more obsessed with, with guitars and, and, and boning. Coochie. You yeah, can say coochie. I can say okay. coochie, but whatever. <laughs> well, when I was in high school, I basically just hung out with all the weebs. And we would, you know, just sit around eating Pocky while updating our GeoCities Sailor Moon fan pages. <laughs> so we had some inkling of what Japanese culture was like, the American weeb version of it at least. And I was definitely aware of sumo, but it wasn't really something that I thought a lot about until more recently. So when I first really started to pay attention to sumo, one of the things that I really started to notice was how strong and agile and flexible that these sumo wrestlers are while also having these types of bodies that we don't think of as being athletic bodies in our culture. Yeah. A lot of people just see, you know, they're just like, Oh, well that guy's just, he's just obese. Yeah. There's a lot of stigma about having fat on your body and people make assumptions just automatically about what those fat bodies can do. So just as a girl, body image has always been an image, has always been an issue for me, especially since I haven't even been a size 14 since I was 14. So it's something that I really always had to grapple with, especially recently when I started to experience changes to my body brought on by chronic illness. So I was diagnosed at the beginning of the pandemic, and lucky me, it turned out to be an immune disorder. The disorder that I have basically attacks my joints and bones and muscles and organs, and if I'm not medicated, I will probably end up in a wheelchair within five years. But up until that point, oh, don't worry, I'm medicated now, I'm doing fine. But up until that point, I was pretty active. I wasn't really athletic or anything like that. But I would walk everywhere, mostly because I didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> I've hitchhiked across the country because any good crust lord has to do that at least once. <laughs> so I wasn't inactive, but I wasn't really athletic, I would say, either. I think I got a normal amount of physical activity. Then, when I started to have the symptoms, it all just went downhill so fast. And before I knew it, I could barely walk some days. And I could barely even, like, sleep or just function at all. And one of the hardest parts about it was that even being in this excruciating pain... I knew that there were people around me who were just judging me as a person based on the type of body I had, the disabled body that I had, the fat body that I had, and judging me based on what they thought I could do with that body or why that body was doing the things it was doing. So it took a lot of effort to keep it from affecting my sense of self-esteem. But around the same time I got diagnosed, Matt was starting to really get into sumo. And so we would watch sumo anime together, which I lovingly referred to as Tokyo Fat Slappers. <laughs> and we would watch the Bashos, the sumo, sumo tournaments on NHK. 
and all kinds of YouTube videos of past sumo tournaments and stuff like that. I still do that. Oh, yeah. Like, literally every day. Like, earlier today. (laughs) (laughs) But a lot of these guys, you'll notice, also have chronic pain and chronic injuries. And it's usually in the joints it's usually in the knees and the elbows and the ankles and it really made me think about what I was going through and made me realize these guys are at the top of their game these are champions at what they do and they're going through very similar things with their bodies that I've been going through So maybe this diagnosis doesn't have to be the end for me. Maybe it's not that I have to just resign myself to the fate of being this sedentary person who can't move their body like they used to anymore. Maybe if I put a little bit of effort into it I can get to that point where I'm able to use my body in ways that are even more amazing than how I was using them before just gives you uh, like motivation to excel you know that you could work through the the hand that you were dealt medically and you know still accomplish some things still still do things and still like be active and live, you know, I mean, that, that's kind yeah. of exactly how I've been feeling, you know, about sumo as well. It really has inspired me to just, you know, take more control over my body and I don't have to be, you know, resigned to whatever shitty fate people think yes. my body type is. So, you know, exactly. I can still hitchhike across the country, get into semi trucks with strange truckers and, you know, dumpster okay, maybe and- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dumpster dive and fucking do all of that shit, jump in the fucking mosh pit with everyone and just have a great time being in this human body that is perfectly fine just the fucking way it is. Yeah. And I don't want to imply that if somebody is disabled, they are somehow lesser if they don't make this kind of effort because Every disability is different. Every disabled person is different. But for me, what I'm trying to say is Sumo gave me that inspiration to not give up on myself. And the butts. And the butts. (laughs) Definitely the butts. Something I wanted to kind of get out of the way and talk about since this is the first episode, because I know a lot of people probably have this on their mind, is some of the misconceptions that people have about sumo (laughs) and some of the weird or even offensive things that people think about sumo. Like the one that has always stood out the most to me are the sumo wrestler costumes. Oh, the inflatable fucking party (laughs) things where, yeah, yeah. That's so fucking asinine. That shit is clown shoes. It's uh, what do they have? Like these little, like, uh, like motors in them to keep them inflated. And you could just like, you know, run into someone else wearing an inflated. I mean, you know, it'd be cool if it was just like, you know, an inflatable ball and you could just inflatable ball into your pals. But yeah, but they, the way that they design them, it's pretty, pretty fucking racist. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's not. It's like Halloween. What do you call Spirit Halloween store racist? It's like. (laughs) But it's it's just fucking. I don't know. It's cringy as fuck. Cringy as fuck. And then you know the other kind of misconception that just kind of like irks me is the whole diapers thing. You know, as long as oh the fat dudes in diapers. Fat dudes and that's all sumo wrestlers are is fat dudes and diapers. It's always fucking diapers with these folks. It's you know that's not fucking absorbent. (laughs) It's like fetishes to yourself. (laughs) (laughs) But it's uh it's called a mawashi and it's uh canvas and kind of our canvas like material. You don't washi the (laughs) mawashi. It's it's Pro more like wrestlers don't anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's more of like a loin cloth. I, I mean, maybe not so much as skimpy as fundoshi. And and I just wanted to let everyone know I am seriously going to start sporting fundoshi. Nice. 
<laughs> but anyway, so it's just like really thick, oversized canvas fundoshi. And uh, the ones that amateur sumo wrestlers wear are what the pros would consider to be practice mawashi. But the pros have like these luxurious ass fucking silk mawashi. They're all... It's about three feet by 20 feet and they're folded over lengthwise four times. And then it's, uh, you know, flopped around your crotch and then tied around your waist a few times. Uh, the pusher thruster type, you know, of sumo wrestlers really like a good tight mawashi so that, you know, the grapplers can't really get a good grip underneath. And your grappler types may want to wear a looser mawashi so someone can't get good torque. You know, they grab your belt. They're just pulling a loose piece of cloth instead of grabbing your belt and getting a good twist on you. you know? Yeah, the mawashi is actually a huge part <laughs> of sumo. Exactly. It's a huge part of the actual fighting in sumo. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different kind of, of belt wrestling. Like in Korea, they have shoot'em. And uh, that's like a totally different kind of belt. But in sumo, it's the, it's the mawashi. And... They can get funky, you know. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, like Sabrina said, they don't they don't washy the mawashi. <laughs> um, they really don't wash their mawashis in the pros unless their oyakata or their stable master passes away. But for the most part, they just take them out back and take a deck brush to them or throw them in the dryer and maybe just like hang them out outside. Remember whenever, I think it was like a couple of years ago, someone stole some mawashis oh um, from a stable that. and they, they stole this poor guy. I think he was in Makushita, but he had his uh, pet rabbits cremated remains folded up in his mawashi. And then as soon, and he was doing good until they fucking stole it. And then he like lost the rest of the tournament, got Makikoshi. That was sad. That was sad. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, they don't wash them and they get rank and I'm, I'm certain that amateur sumo tori, especially outside of Japan, probably watch theirs. But I have heard some stories about there's like some high schools, you know, that provide, you know, mawashi. And there might be a, a, a rival high school going to a sumo tournament and they're wearing those nasty, funky, provided mawashis that have probably got 20 years worth of ass and balls just <laughs> permeating through there. It's just fucking just cheese. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's just the fucking cheesiest, rankest fucking, yeah. But they, they're they still wearing them, you know? I mean, you don't want to wash them and get the it's funk off. It's softened by all the smegma. <laughs> I mean, mine mine's probably softened by pinto beans and fry bread grease. Fuck it. It just <laughs> makes me feel like a giant Indian taco, you know, smashing into my opponents. <laughs> but in amateur sumo, there's definitely people who wash the mawashi. Yeah. And they wear... A lot of people will wear shorts or something underneath the mawashi as well. Yeah. Although some do go traditional. Yeah. I I wear compression shorts and a lot of other folks like to do the, the compression shorts. And uh, whenever women tend to wrestle, they'll have... I, I've seen a lot of, uh, what do you call those, like leggings? Mm -hmm. And I've seen uh, leotards Tights. and wrestling singlets. And th that was cool. I, Dark Circle Sumo in Austin uh, provided these wrestling singlets. And uh, watching Eros Armstrong fucking oh. win the goddamn Nash. And she, Eros Armstrong. <laughs> she is pretty fucking amazing. Dude, she's and, badass. <laughs> and uh, if you ever watch any amateur women sumo keep an eye out for eros armstrong because she is a goddess of destruction i wonder if she washes the mawashi i'm sure she probably does we should ask her yeah but besides that what's another one of your quote unquote favorite misconceptions <laughs> about God. sumo uh, the one that really kind of gets under my skin is uh you you encounter some of those um mma bros meaning not the people that actually do MMA, but the ones that just, they're obsessed with it and they're armchair martial artists, you know, um, they'll say that, uh, Couch sumo, <laughs> pretty much. They'll, they'll say things like, you know, sumo isn't worth watching or learning because it's not combat effective, you know? And I, I, I do, if you could see me, I'm putting that in quotes, you know, combat effective. I mean, who gives a shit? Not all combat sports are a dire life or death struggle for supremacy or the, quickest most efficient way to destroy someone's groin with krav maga but i sometimes mean sometimes it's just an exhibition of a specific skill yeah exactly be, i mean if you want to destroy someone's groin with krav maga i mean go on ahead but <laughs> i mean there that's it isn't what 
you know, the end all be all of what wrestling and these types of uh, physical competitions are about. Um, any jackass who's watched like Dragon Ball Z or Baki, you know, thinks they want to be that's, the strongest. That's me, I'm a jackass that watches <laughs> DBZ and Baki. <laughs> I mean, I, I like him too, but <laughs> but in sumo, it's learning to master a specific skill set and learning the aspects of cultural identity that are interwoven through the ceremony and ritual that is sumo itself. Yeah, sumo started as a, a part of Shintoism, a Shinto Shinto ritual, yeah. essentially. So there's, there's so much in sumo that is symbolic of other larger, grander concepts. And I think that's pretty fucking cool and and everyone in like this and the everyone in the amateur sumo community is so accepting and there's a strong sense of cohesiveness some camaraderie so you know we're not out to like mangle each other we're you know we want to practice an ancient martial art and learn to best each other within the game skill set because we love it uh, we love sumo and so we want to try to work within sumo to out sumo each other it's <laughs> fucking great i love it Try to do sumo better than the other sumo guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think a big part of that, too, is just the misconceptions that people have about what people with those body types are capable of doing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, they don't consider that people that have the sumo physique to be athletes or don't consider oh, them to be yeah. athletic. And that, that's a really fucking sad, you know, because I've seen some amazing feats of athleticism and agility from bodies that people would certainly not consider to be athletic. So do you remember like in the September 2021 tournament, whenever Uda was uh, going against Terra no Fuji? And, oh, and he was doing that Matrix shit. Yeah, fucking backbending Matrix shit, <laughs> holding on to the, onto his Mawashi. That like limbo champion <laughs> sort of shit. Yeah, that was fucking incredible. And Uda probably has one of the most most acrobatic and athletic styles of sumo. I mean, the boy has, he, yeah, the boy definitely has a Randy Bobandy cheeseburger body. And uh, I mean, look at Aqua with his Kakanage spam. Uh, you, you really have to be strong and flexible to keep trying to scoop up folks as heavy as you are with your leg. So you could toss them. It's, it's just not high speed hugging or a two person mosh pit. You, you really do see some amazing badass things in sumo. And then once you do, you just can't stop. You just want more, more more sumo. Of course, you can probably use a lot of the kamarite in the mosh pit. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Could you fucking imagine though? <laughs> oh my god! When I do the wall of death, you know, like you're at one side of the mosh pit, and then half the crowd's on the other side of the mosh pit, and they're like, "Go!" And then you just run at each other full speed, just fucking sakui nage people left and right, fuck ashitori leg pick into someone else. That'd be yeah. Like... See, sumo is totally punk rock. <laughs> you learn some crowd killing moves. Punks even have their own tachi. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to be listening to while training sumo today? Well, I don't really listen to like when we're training with the guys, you know, at 10th Planet um, Jiu Jitsu, we're just listening to the sound of meat smacking upon meat at high speed. So sounds um, pretty metal. <laughs> if you see any of the um, YouTube videos of our uh, practices that we post, you really can't hear that meat smacking. It's kind of got an ASMR quality, but I digress. So it's whenever I'm at, <laughs> when I'm training at home or, you know, we have a gym in our apartment complex, I'll go and, you know, a fucking lift. But, um, one of the records that I picked up recently that really fucking, you know, fucks me in the ear bussy is <laughs> <laughs> it's succumb succumb. Uh, they have this album called, I don't know if it's called XXI or if it's just called 21, but it's pretty fucking menacing. They have a very distinct style of blackened death metal. So when I say blackened, that doesn't mean it's overtly spoopy, you know, like, I don't know, like atmospheric black metal. But it's um, very violent death metal with a really lo-fi, raw quality. Like, it's it sounds intentionally blown out. And it's fucked just Right. So it really helps with the uh, breakneck tempo changes and the fucking speed. And their vocalist has this very guttural growl. And she could get into some intense shrieks, but that growl sounds like she's summoning fucking eldritch horrors from beyond. And um, 
This is kind of like the metal equivalent to sneaking on a broken roller coaster and riding that dangerous shit through to the end. And it's it's seriously, it shakes you around, it jerks you around, it fucking like takes a corner all fucking fast. It's fucking great. So if you like death metal and if you really like just violent, turbulent just intense intense fucking death metal with a kind of a raw lo-fi quality to it get this fucking record it's fucking great and so maynad is a good song okeanos was really fucking good but eight trigrams i think was probably my favorite it was fucking just oh, just it, it grabs you by the boo-boos <laughs> and that's it that's the first episode yay! we did it <laughs> yay We've I'm, only been working on it for two weeks. I'm Yay. proud of this. We actually, we did it. We did the thing. We did. We did the thing. So if you wanted to either give us praise or give a shit, you can go to Twitter at Punks Sumo. So that's at P-U-N-X-S-U-M-O. Yeah, I kind of fucked up the Twitter account. Ah, fuck it. So feel free to give me shit. <laughs> Um, we'll probably be having other forms of social medias pimpling up all over the interbuts here shortly. But... but you can definitely find us on YouTube right now. In fact, that's probably where you're currently listening. Yeah. Just look for Sumo Punks. Again, that is with the X at the end of Punks. Sumo Punks. The so... extra X for extra sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our show. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys in the future. Bye. Bye.